Welcome back. Will traditionally blue Miami-Dade County turn into a red county this year? That's the question I had for Renee Garcia, the chairman of the Republican Party in Miami-Dade. For some context, four years ago, Andrew Gillum beat DeSantis by 21 points in Miami-Dade. Now, DeSantis may actually win the county. Renee, give me your sense, you know, as we head into the final week or so, final 10 days of the, of the election, uh, how are you feeling about what's taking place here in Dade County? Look, Jim, first of all, I'm feeling uh, very confident, but um, I'm not going to stop until that last, uh, the last minute until 7 p.m. on Tuesday uh, of election night. All right, we're going to keep on working real hard to ensure that we motivate our base, get people out, make sure that uh, our message uh, is out there with the voters to ensure that we try to put a stop or a break on some of these uh, uh, policies, liberal policies that are coming out of Washington, D.C. that are really hurting our economy and the middle class. It does seem that that Dade County could turn red, which, you know, if, uh, you had suggested that to someone five years ago, let alone 10 years ago, uh, they would have thought that you were crazy. Why are we even having a discussion, you and I, about the possibility of Dade being a red county now? Well, look, I think a big part is um, what's happening with the economy. And actually, let me take a step back. Early on at the beginning of the year, uh, the Democrats were talking that there was going to be a, a, a blue wave that was going to come about, that Republicans were never going to ever be able to win another election uh, in, in across the country, maybe here in Florida or in Dade County. But the opposite has really happened. Uh, we see that Republicans have been elected in non-traditional Republican seats, like we have the mayor of, uh, of Coral Gables, Vince Lago, who was got elected. We have uh, various council members at local levels, like in Surfside, the mayor of Surfside as well, um, and Sunny Isles. We're working on Sunny Isles as well to make sure we get uh, Republicans elected to the local levels. Uh, we see that inflation continues to rise. Gas prices are starting to creep up. We have an open border. Forget about the, even the humanitarian crisis that's happening on the border, but we see all these drugs that are coming in. Um, and who is that affecting? Minority class and middle, middle class America. Uh, the working class are the ones that are being impacted the most by inflation, gas prices, and unfortunately, the drugs that are coming in through the borders. Let's talk about uh, the Hispanic vote for a second. I think Democrats made the mistake of believing that demographics are destiny that all they had to do was wait out, in effect, older Cubans, the conservative older Cuban population, and that their children would naturally be Democrat, that they would be more liberal-minded, more socially liberal on a lot of different policies. Talk to me a little bit about, the, you know, not just the mistakes that maybe Democrats made in their assumptions, but the work that you and the Republicans have been doing here in Dade County to sort of bring them into the fold. Jim, while... My friends on the left, I've been, since I became chairman of the party, have been hitting me left and right on Twitter with bots. And every time I post something, there's comments, you know, they're trolling me on Twitter. I've been out there doing the work. We, can't take credit myself, we as a party have been out there doing the work, talking to Hispanic groups, talking to individuals, talking to any, any groups that would want to listen to us and talk, talking the facts of what's happening in the economy. Um, talking about the fact that interest rates are going up. When interest rates go up, who does that hurt? That hurts the middle class. And when it comes to the Hispanic community, just not just the Cuban Americans, but all Hispanics in this community, I think all of them can relate. And they all understand that who is being affected the most and who's hurting the most is them and their families. We have not taken any Hispanic group for granted. We have reached out to them. We are working with them. We're engaging them. We now have a Dominican group that's being established. We have a Colombian group that's being established. We have Venezuelan groups that are being established, uh, Republican groups that are being established. And that is because they want, they're buying into our message. They believe in, in the economic uh, progress that Republicans can bring to, to any, any minority group and to the country as a whole. I do know that, that you and, and the, the Republican Party in Florida have faced criticism because on the executive committee there are a number of individuals who, who have been identified as Proud Boys or on, on that sort of uh, spectrum. Uh, does that concern you at all? Does it concern you that, that as you open this tent that you're trying to build that, that elements within it are, are maybe there for not necessarily the right reasons? So, Jim, 
uh, we, as I've been chairman, I've been trying to grow this party, have folks from all different walks of life in as, as a member of the REC. That's the only way we're going to get some actual change done. Is everyone has a place and a voice within the Republican Party. We believe in the First Amendment and the, and the Republican Party. I'm a firm believer in it. Unfortunately, on the left, you see some individuals that they only agree with you until the moment you disagree with them, and then they try to write you off. Now, on the issue of the Proud Boys, the press and even the Miami Herald has made a big story about how many Proud Boys um, are in the executive committee. I'll tell you right now that there was five members when these stories broke, there was about five members, two of which were voting members. And yet they have tried to paint the, the Miami-Dade Republican Party as a fascist, racist organization, yet we're the most diverse group, the most, Repu most diverse Republican group in the state of Florida and maybe in the nation. So that those attacks are really not sticking because the reality is that we have continued to grow our tents. Uh, we, like I told you earlier, we have Dominican groups that are being established, Venezuelans, all my different minority groups that we're trying to engage to make sure that we can in incorporate them into the messaging, into the conversation that we have as, as a Republican Executive Committee, both here in Miami-Dade County and at the state of Florida and nationally. You as the chairman could speak up and denounce the views of those who are extremists within within the party. Would that not be a good a good thing to do to denounce those who are, who are expressing extremist views within your own party? Should you not be cleaning up the work within what have, takes place within the Republican Party while also criticizing what's taking place on the left? And as uh, when, our, when the Democrats start denouncing the woke mentality, woke ideology, and this ideology that you can only agree with them 100% of the time or otherwise, you'll be this, uh, this, this uh, thrown away. Uh, I would do the same thing. But right now, Jim, I can tell you, we, the Republican Party, me as myself, I'll denounce any, involved, any fascist extremist views. Um, I will denounce them here now and every single time. You've known me for a long time. You know who I am. And those that know me know my positions and the votes that I've taken in, in when I was in the legislature and now in the county commission. Um, so there is no room for any hate. There's no room for any extremist ideology that, that may they, they may inflict pain on others. So yes, I have denounced them and I have denounced them when when the in the past and I'll continue to denounce them. We're not about that. They just want to paint us as a group who are fascist and extremists and we're full of hate and it's quite the opposite. We are continuing to grow our party. We see more minorities coming into our party. We see now that Miami-Dade County uh, could possibly be turned red uh, and the first time since, uh, since I think it was Jeb Bush's, Jeb Bush's uh, ele election to, to governor. And so all those attacks that the left is putting on us are not working because we're sticking with the facts and we're continuing to stick with the facts and we're continuing to stick with the message that the Republicans are, are the only ones right now that could put a break to all these liberal policies that are hurting the middle class. What would it mean if, if Dade County turned red this election cycle for Governor DeSantis? Yeah, listen, it, it means that he's doing his job. You know, we don't have to agree with Governor DeSantis 100% of the, of the time. No, no, but let me, I, I didn't mean it necessarily, and obviously it meant that that they're supportive of him. But I mean, sort of what is the seismic wave nationally that could be felt if Dade County actually went red for Ron DeSantis? What do you think the effects of that would be felt in Washington and through other parts of the country? I think what, what, what that seismic shift or the message that it sends is a, as long as we stick to the facts. And if, as long as we have policies that are going to better the economy, are going to help the middle class and not be hypocritical about it, then you'll see that across the country, you'll see more people getting engaged and following the message that we have. I think it's a message um, that it sends across the country where we cannot take the Hispanic group for granted. And I think the Democrats have done that and us as Republicans have been reaching out uh, to, the, uh, to, to different Hispanic groups, uh, especially when it comes to, to the First Amendment, when it comes to, to issues of, 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 of pro-economic progress. Those are the messages that are resonating. Those are the issues that really uh, resonate with people, and that's what they want to listen to. And I think not only Hispanics, but all types of um, uh, individuals and minority groups have been flocking to the Republican Party. We're going to continue to grow it. Uh, I, I think that it's shame on us uh, at the national level if we don't continue to foster those relationships, 
to make sure that we do have an inclusive party, that we have a diverse party that represents what America looks like. I'll tell you what I think one of the effects of it could very well be. I think I think it cements the notion that Florida is a red state. I mean, with if Governor DeSantis wins by eight, nine, ten points after winning by just 30,000 votes, think about that for a second. Uh, you know, 10 years earlier in 2012, Obama won the state of Florida for the second consecutive time when he ran for president. For this to come this, this far and Dade County to potentially be red, or at the very least, maybe only one or two points or three points for, for blue, you can't win the state of Florida unless you roll up big numbers in Dade and Broward counties. So that's the message. I mean, I don't know. I, I would imagine you tend to agree that at this point, after this election, Florida goes the way of Ohio, where Ohio used to be a swing state and now is considered a red state. Does this does this election have the potential of turning Florida into a solidly red state going forward? As long as we continue with the, the right policies, I will tell you yes. We see that Republican um, uh, voter enrollment has increased across the state. We have narrowed the gap here in Day, in, in Day County. It's still considered a blue county, but we have narrowed the gap here from the efforts that we have been embarked on. Let me, let me just ask you this, and this may be a tricky question since you serve on the commission, uh, but you rattled off before, you know, Sunny Isles, uh, you know, uh, uh, Surfside, Coral Gables. Is the next main target for the Republican Party in Dade County to take out uh, Danielle Levine Cava when she's up for re-election in two years? This will definitely have a candidate running. Uh, but right now, uh, my goal is, as chairman of, of the Republican Party in dade County, is to elect uh, Republicans to the local levels, good Republicans, to make sure that we have fiscal conservatives on, on, these, on these seats that can really help our municipalities and help our, our county and help our state grow. Um, this, that has been my goal from the beginning, and I think we've accomplished it with some of the victories that we, that we see that have happened and continue to happen. When we come back, more of my interview with Charlie Chris, and later we had hoped to have both Annette Tadeo and Maria Elvira Salazar on the show to talk about their closely watched congressional race. And Salazar had accepted our offer to come on the show, but she backed out at the last minute. So you will hear from Tadeo. That's coming up. Stay with us. 